Hello, my name is Sean. Today I'm going to be doing problem 3.11 from the Griffiths textbook. Uh, the setup of the problem is that two semi-infinite grounded conducting planes meet at right angles. Uh, they terminate at the origin. Um, these planes lie on the xz plane and the yz plane, uh, and we ha they both have a potential of zero. Uh, and there is a charge Q situated a distance P of the x-axis and A around the y-axis. Now, this problem essentially asks uh, four different questions. Uh, what is the image configuration? Uh, you know, where do we place our image charges um, when trying to solve for the potential and whatnot? Uh, and what is their values? Uh, the second is, what is the force uh, on Q? Uh, how much work does it take to bring Q from infinity to where it is currently situated at uh, AB? Um, and does the method of images work for all angles of theta? Here we have a uh, theta of 90 degrees. Uh, does it work for all theta, arbitrary theta? And we'll discuss that. Uh, and to start, we have a few rules that we're going to be coming back to. Um, first are boundary conditions, that the potential must equal zero on the conducting planes, as is defined by the problem, uh, and that the potential is zero at large distances, um, and that the image charges cannot be placed in the region of interest, our original region of interest. Um, can't just be introducing imaginary charges into our region of interest uh, when we're trying to solve our problem. All right, to start. Uh, so let's uh, focus on the first question. Now, that is, where do we place our image charges? So to start, uh, we can treat this how we might treat uh, a single infinite conducting plane. We have our original charge Q, and that is B, that is A, and this is our Y and X axis, and we place at the reflection points. And there will be two reflection points. This is at negative B, this is at negative A, uh, and we'll place opposite charges. And we can give that a shot. Um, so we will calculate the potential uh, for each and add them up. And so our potential of our original charge plus these two charges. Um, so let's call this charge one, this one charge two, this one charge three. And so we'll give that a shot. Uh, we'll say our potential for one is one over four pi epsilon naught times our positive charge Q. Um, and if you imagine a, you know, any field point that you're going to be sampling at, uh, you know, you have uh, this uh, position vector, and then you have your position vector of your charge, and then, you know, your R minus your R prime uh, is going to be our separation vector between the field point uh, and our charge. And so we can simply calculate that for one, it's just going to be our r prime, we know that for our r prime for charge one uh, is going to equal a x hat plus b y hat, and then our arbitrary position vector for our field point uh, is just going to be, and this will be the case for all of them, so I'm just going to make that generic, x x hat plus y y hat plus z z hat. And so our separation vector is going to be x minus a x hat plus y minus b y hat plus z hat. And our magnitude is going to then just be our sort of Pythagorean identity. Uh, and that's going to be x minus a squared plus y minus b squared plus z squared, as we tell from your vector. So we'll just plug that in. Minus a squared plus y minus b squared plus c squared, all square rooted. Now, then we can do our potential from our second one, and one over four pi epsilon naught. And without writing all this again, uh, as you can imagine, we're just going to have a negative b, meaning it's going to turn this term uh, to a y plus b squared. We have x minus a squared plus y plus b squared plus c squared, and that's all square rooted. And our third potential, 1 over, oh, and this is a negative q, and it's going to be the same for this one. Negative q over, and then 
Same thing, except we're going to have a negative a turning this a term squared, and this b will remain negative. So we have x plus a squared plus y minus b squared plus c squared. Now, uh, you know, we can try adding these up, and you see we have uh, all these like terms, and so we'll shove these together, and we'll get the expression our v equals uh, q over 4 pi epsilon naught times, and then we'll have our charge 1, which is x minus a squared plus y minus b squared plus z squared, uh, and then minus, because these are negative, 1 over square root x minus a squared plus y plus b squared plus z squared. And then we'll have our third charge potential over the square root of x uh, plus a squared plus y minus b squared plus c squared. And you may think that's all good and dandy, but we have a problem. One of our boundary conditions. Uh, you know, v equals zero large distances. As we can see, that's going to hold true. This is, you know, uh, inversely proportional to distances. We're going to get a decreasing potential. That's all right. But our second boundary, or our first boundary condition, uh, v equals zero on the conducting planes. If we imagine that x or y is zero, and the term, and the when x equals zero, we're going to get this negative a squared. It's just going to be the same as like an a squared. Uh, our z squared terms are going to be the same. Uh, so this y minus b squared term is going to be the only different thing. Um, is there going to be, uh, and this is going to be uh, the same between these two, this is positive, this is negative, this is going to cancel out, we're going to be left with an extra term. Uh, and this is the same when y is 0. When y is 0, this negative b squared uh, just becomes a b squared. Um, and so our, you know, our x minus a squared term, that's going to make these terms alike, they're going to cancel out, uh, but we're going to have an extra term. So, it turns out, in order to satisfy our boundary condition, we can just place an extra charge right here, a positive q. And... As you'll be able to see, um, this will cancel out with any leftover term we have when we're doing those boundary conditions. So we'll do a plus 1 over square root x. Uh, and this is going to be minus a minus b. So we're going to get an x plus a squared plus y plus b squared plus z squared. And that's our potential. Now, the next problem, the next part of the problem, is going to be finding the force. Um, on Q, and this is going to be a little simpler because we don't have arbitrary field points. Uh, we're just going to be worrying about the uh, force between, uh, you know, uh, each charge on our original charge. So we're going to be calculating three forces and adding them together. Now, so let's start with a fresh piece of paper. So this will be two, and. We're going to have our force is equal to our 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times our q i q j, just our two charges, over our magnitude of our separation vector squared, the distance between them, uh, and the di direction of the separation vector. And just to get it out of the way early on, uh, this uh, unit vector uh, in the direction of our separation vector is just going to be equal to our separation vector over its own magnitude. Uh, so we can rewrite this as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught qi qj over our magnitude cubed times our separation vector. All right. Now we can start just by uh, looking at, we're going to have the force of uh, 2 on 1 end, we'll also name this while we're at it, to charge 4. Force of 2 on 1, force of 3 on 1, force of 4 on 1. Uh, the force of 2 on 1 is just going to be a distance 2b away. Uh, force of 3 on 1 is going to be a distance of 2a away. And this one gets a little more complicated. We'll, we'll get into it. So we have our first, let's do it over here. Our force of 2 on 1 is going to be equal to our 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times uh, 1 is positive, 1 is negative, uh, but they are both q, so we'll get a negative q squared over 
are the magnitude of our separation vector between them, which is going to be 2b squared, and this is just going to be in the y hat direction, uh, just because it is directly vertical. Uh, now our force of 3 on 1 is going to be similarly, or 4 pi epsilon naught, uh, negative q squared again, over 2a squared, this is going to be purely in the x hat direction. Uh, getting a little more complicated, uh, as we can see, we're going to have this configuration where our original charge, uh, we're going to have 1 and 4, and these are going to be, uh, let's see, 2b, 2a, this is going to be the vertical and horizontal component that represents the displacement. Uh, and so if we're trying to describe this magnitude, that's going to be 2a squared plus 2b squared. And the vector, the unit vector, uh, or rather actually the full vector, because we're not dealing with the unit anymore, is going to be, the separation vector is going to be equal to 2a x hat plus 2b y hat. All right, so let's plug that all in. Our force of... Uh, 4 on 1 is going to be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Uh, these are both positive, so that's just q squared over our magnitude. Um, it's going to be our magnitude cubed. Um, so we're going to have uh, this 2a squared plus 2b squared to the 3 halves times our separation vector 2a x hat plus 2b y hat. Now, now we can just uh, add all these together. As you can see, we're going to have some like terms. Uh, so we can pull all those out. And maybe less obvious is we're going to have a 4 that we're going to be able to pull out. This 2 gets squared, pull that 4 out. 2 gets squared, pull that 4 out. Uh, we're going to have uh, a 2 in here that gets squared. These both have squared. Pull that out for take the square root. That's 2. Cube it. Uh, it's going to be 8. But then we have this 2 term in the numerator. So that's going to end up being a 1 over 4 term that we can pull out. So we get that our total force is going to be equal to... Oh, and we can also pull these q squareds out. q squared over... And then our uh, 4 times our 4 here. And you get 16 pi epsilon naught times. And we can uh, already, if we want, just collect together all of our x and uh, y components. And it turns out that we get a over a squared plus b squared to the 3 halves minus 1 over a, this is all the x hat component, plus b over a squared plus b squared to the 3 halves minus 1 over b y hat. Here we have it. That's our force. That's our part two. Oh, apologies. Uh, this is an a squared. This is a b squared. And that's our force. That's our answer for part two. Now, part three of the work. This is actually uh, a little simpler. Uh, similar situation. We're going to be just worrying about the, uh, you know, no arbitrary field points. So we're going to start with our work equation, which for discrete points, discrete charges, uh, it's going to be the sum of all of these works, qi, v, r, i, the potential, um, due to each charge. Now, we can expand that, first just by calculating the potential between each. So, our potential due to our first charge, uh, or no, our second charge, because we're moving the first charge from infinity to, uh, the point that it's at. And uh, so we get our potential due to charge 2, just 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times negative q over the distance between it and the point where we're moving our charge 2, which is just 2a. Uh, likewise, uh, for the potential due to charge 3, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught negative q over 2b. And the potential due to charge 4 is going to equal... 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times q over, and it's just going to be the magnitude that we found before. 
the distance between the two. So that's going to be the square root of 2a squared plus 2b squared. Now we can add all these together. Uh, and as, as once again, we're going to be able to pull a 2 out of this. Um, these, uh, you know, you get a 4s here, pull the 4 out of the square root, you get 2. So we're just going to take everything out, take the q over 4 pi epsilon naught out. And so we're going to get the work equals, uh, and we're multiplying, you know, the, these uh, are multiplied by q. So we're going to get q squared over uh, 8. Oh, sorry. This is going to be, oh yes. So our work is going to be 1 half times uh, the term that we pull out, which is q squared over 8 pi epsilon naught times our 1 over uh, square root 2a squared plus 2b squared minus 1 over a minus 1 over b. Just to clean things up. Let's put these together. So we get q squared over 16 pi epsilon naught times 1 over square root. Let's just make this a little cleaner format. Uh, oops, sorry, I kept those twos in there when we already factored them out. Square root of a squared plus b squared minus 1 over a minus 1 over b. That's going to be our work. All right, okay, and this was the third thing we were solving for. Uh, the fourth thing, a little more conceptual. So, it asks, does images, the, this method of images work for all angles of theta between these uh, infinite conducting or semi-infinite conducting planes? Uh, it turns out, well, let's just consider, oh, that's not how you do a Roman numeral four. So let's just first consider the case um, that we are used to, the simpler version of this, with a single infinite conducting plane. You can view that as this theta just equaling 180 degrees. And we have the case that we just did, where we have these two planes, theta equals 90 degrees. And we had our, you know, our single charge, and then our four image charges. Um, and there's sort of two novel cases that you can consider. Uh, what if we have an arbitrary obtuse angle? And what if we have an arbitrary acute angle? Now, for our arbitrary obtuse angle, you know, you place your charge here. You place your, you know, your first image charge on this plane. Simple enough. Uh, but then, well, how do you, how do you, how do you uh, place a second image charge? What, uh, what is the plane that you reflect across to get uh, to satisfy our boundary conditions. Uh, and as it turns out, for any obtuse angle that isn't 180 degrees, uh, the only thing that will satisfy our boundary conditions uh, will be placing a charge in the region of interest. And as we listed in our rules here, image charges cannot be placed in our original region of interest. So that rules out any obtuse angles. So how about acute angles? Well, as it turns out, um, let's say this is a 45 degree angle. If we have our charge right here, we place our reflected charge. Well, then we can satisfy these boundary conditions without placing any charges in our regional region of interest, but it will take a strange, this is where it equals 45 degrees, to where we need uh, eight, uh, seven image charges. Uh, and so if you're looking for a pattern here, we have thetas that work, and you might say, hey, maybe uh, it's option A, 180 degrees, and 90 degrees, those are the ones that we found worked, uh, and they're the only ones that work, but uh, you could find that it's 45 degrees works too. Uh, but maybe there's a, a bigger pattern here, because we know 180 works, and that's pretty much the largest angle you can go before you're basically just creating another obtuse angle, and we know that doesn't work. So maybe you place, uh, maybe, maybe the pattern that you find is integer multiples of 180, and it turns out that's true. So, as it turns out, the method of images uh, only works in this two semi-infinite conducting plane situation for integer multiples of 180 degrees between the two planes. All right, that was it. Uh, thank you very much, and have a nice day.